I'm Lauren McBride and this is my brush technique workshop. In this workshop I'm going to teach you how to use your brushes to create the effect that you want and how not to use your brushes to create the effect that you don't want. I really hope that you enjoy this workshop. Let's get started. The first brushes I'm going to go through are the long striping brushes so as you can see here i've got two different sizes the top one's thicker the bottom one's thinner they're both exactly the same in length hopefully you'll have done my brushes and the different brushes workshop prior to this so i don't need to explain the difference with these so the brush i'm going to use is the thicker one just for ease of you being able to see what i'm doing on the camera so I've got some tips here these are just two coats of gel polish I haven't uh, top coated them I have just left them um, with the two coats of gel polish and then I've wiped off the inhibition layer okay so there's no top coat on there whatsoever okay it's just a nude color so that you can see the contrast in the lines and the background of the nail. I've also got two different mediums here. So I have got the top one, which is your gel artisan paint. So I'm also doing a workshop that has got all the differences between the different mediums that we use. So this is a gel artisan paint and this is a normal gel polish. The difference in these is explained in the other workshop um so i'm not going to go through that necessarily now uh but they are the two different mediums that i've got here today okay so first of all i'm going to go through the mistakes that people make when they are using a lining brush so lining brushes tend to be quite long um, and what people tend to do i'm just going to zoom in so you can now see so what people tend to do is they go in to their medium with the end like this so as you can see on here it's just on the tip it's not an even consistency so you've got lumps bumps bubbles and all sorts going on and then they go in with their lining brush so they then want to create a line so in the on this now I'm going to go across horizontally I am also going to show you the techniques of going vertically down a nail but for this now I'm going to go horizontally so I haven't got a consistent dispersion of product on my brush and I've just popped it on the end this is what people tend to do wrong because then what they do is they go in to do their line and it's completely inconsistent you can see the dispersion of product isn't correct you've got thicker parts thinner parts and I've lost my line towards the end and that's because I've only used the tip of my brush so then they go back into their product, they put too much on because they think they need more and they try and go over that line again. Not only has the line got thicker in, um, you can see how thick that line is there, it's actually standing off of the nail, but it's also got thicker in width. So then they think, right, I'm just going to patch up that bit there and then you miss it and then you think, oh, I need to patch up that bit there and you get a really inconsistent line okay that's what not to do all right so i'm just going to get rid of that product that's on that brush and start again with a clean brush so you can see what to do so i've got a nice clean brush okay and what you need to do is disperse the product all the way through your brush so by having your product on a flat surface you can then pull through the product rather than using this action and dipping you are pulling through the product and what that is doing is it's dispersing the product through your brush so you can see there my brush is fully loaded i show you there my brush is fully loaded with product from just below the bottom of the brush right to the tip there's no lumps or bumps and I've got full dispersion of product on my brush. There's no bobble at the end. It's completely dispersed evenly throughout my brush. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and do that line again. So going horizontally across the nail can be quite difficult because obviously, I mean, this hasn't got a very deep C curve, but you're working on a curve. So you're trying to create a flat, straight line on a curved surface. OK, this is where the use of your brush comes into play, because what you do is you lay your brush down across the nail. So you can see in one stroke, you have done an even straight line. The product is consistent throughout the entire line. It has gone all the way across the nail and it's nice and even. As to this one, whereas if I was just gonna dip and I had inconsistent uh, product in my brush and just using the tip, it doesn't work. So especially with a lining brush or a striping brush, whatever you want to call it, you need to disperse the product evenly on your palette and through your brush and use your brush. You can see how much pressure I'm putting on that. Use your brush consistently to go across the nail. Now, if you mess it up, so like here, the last thing you want to do is try and go in and rectify that because now I've got a thicker end there. So then I'll need to go here and then I need to go here and then you get the same problem that we had before. So with a striping brush, you need to make sure that your product's dispersed. You're using your brush with an even pressure all the way across the nail. So if I show you, my brush is actually bending here. I'm not using my tip like this and creating inconsistent pressure. You need to, I'm just going to go to the top of the nail because I've run out of nail now. I'm just going to disperse my product again and use even pressure across the entirety of the nail. Okay. What a lot of people tend to do as well, which I'm just going to quickly cover on this, is they will start a line, for example, on the edge of the nail and they will get, can you see how that's not quite a line? Like you've got it rounded here. Now that's pretty unavoidable because obviously that's where the start of the line is. If you're ever doing line work, make sure you finish it off. It makes it more crisp and it begins the line as a solid line. Rather than here, you've got that indentation. You want to finish that off. So always go back to the end of your lines, the start and the finish of your lines and finish the line. So this is really important to do when we come to do character painting as well. You have to finish your line, all right? So that is how to use your striping brush. Now I'm just going to, because obviously we've gone horizontally across the nail with that one. This one I'm gonna go vertically, okay? So this is really good uh, for when you're doing geometric work. And again, what not to do is to inconsistently load your brush. So I've got an inconsistency there. You can see I've got a bobble and I've got a bit of a blob going on in the middle. And then people go in. So I'm going to do this on this side. People go in with the tip of their brush and run out of product. Now, that's OK if their nails are only that long. But you need to be able to be consistent because then what you're going to do is go back in and then your line's going to get all wonky and then you've got a blob on the end and you've got a um, slightly thinner part here and it's thicker here and it's just not consistent. So like we've said before, load up your brush so it's nice and evenly dispersed throughout the entirety of the brush. So there's no bubbles, dips, divots or anything like that. And then we start at the base of the nail using the whole of the brush. Can you see? I've got the whole of the brush there down on the nail and then take it off. 
and then you've got a nice even consistent line now like i said before on the last nail what you would then do is go in and tidy up where you started so that it's a you don't get this rounded edge here you get the the line goes through the nail rather than having a starting point okay so i'm just going to show you that again i've gone into the wrong medium there so i'm just going to show you that again with my artisan paint okay so it's nice and even in consistency on your brush there's no bubbles on the end pop it on lay your brush down through the nail and come off and tidy up where you started nice consistent line so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to really quickly show you with my thinner striping brush so exactly the same technique drag it through your polish or your artisan gel paint or whatever even if this was acrylic paint you could do the same thing so it's nice and even all the way through start lay it down and go through the nail okay can you see it's a nice consistent line now what people tend to do if they're doing tartan or something like that they will then go across the nail and they will try and do it all in one go so can you see what's happened here we've pulled the product out of the uh, vertical lines and created inconsistencies in our horizontal line so the way you would stop that from happening is you would flash cure your um your vertical lines or your horizontal whichever you've done first you would flash cure that for 10 seconds and then you would go in and do the lines that go across it and then you won't get this bleed in between lines and inconsistencies so that is your striping or lining brushes now what some people can do as well when you get used to using your brush is you can go in I'm just going to load up my brush again. You can go in and you can use a lining brush to create um, waves and swirls of colour. But can you see I'm using the entire, still using the entirety of my brush. Okay, so don't be doing this because it's not going to be consistent your brush doesn't hold enough weight to be able to do that so what you need to do is start lay your brush down and go through the nail all right so once you get used to loading that brush correctly you can create curved lines or flicks with your brush that are nice and even and consistent don't be tempted to use a striping brush like this unless you're going for that effect then obviously do it but don't be trying to do that because it's not going to work you're never going to get that tip back in the right place to be able to complete that curve you need to lay your lining brushes down and go through the nail all right so that is how to use and how not to use your lining brushes now with all three of those nails i have used the artisan gel paint so i'm just going to clean off my brushes and i'm going to show you the difference with using a gel polish now remembering gel polish does have its uses for nail art but when it comes to lines i'm just going to show you the difference so you can see that has held its color it's held its lines i haven't cured any of those yet they're still wet now if i'm going to go you can see the consistency already is completely different and the spread of the product throughout the brush is also completely different so i've loaded that evenly and i'm just going to come down the nail can you see 
how the consistency is different. So I've got a slight, I'm just going to zoom in so you can really see that. I've got a slight difference in colour just here. Okay. Whereas it's darker up here. So that's the difference with a gel polish. You don't necessarily get a completely even distribution of product. It still creates a lovely line, but if I show you and I do a swell using the brush, you get inconsistencies in the colour. It works perfectly fine, but you do get inconsistencies because it's that much thinner. It's not designed to sit and hold its own weight. But there are some instances where you would use a gel polish over, just show you that again, over an artisan. Okay. So that is how to use your striping brushes. So that is the first part of the workshop, striping brushes. I hope that's answered lots of questions and lots of troubleshooting. And now I'm going to move on to the next brush. Okay, so brush techniques, brush number two, I'm going to be going through the ultra fine. So this is a triple zero ultra fine brush. Okay, this part here isn't actually the brush. The brush starts here. Okay, and then you've got the brush from there. So you can see how tapered and fine that is. All right now this brush if you're going to be doing character painting is the one to use i'm just going to get rid of that light slightly so i have got as before five tips here that have all got two coats of gel polish no top coat i haven't buffed them i've just wiped off the inhibition layer okay so i'm going to take this tip i'm just going to show you how fine this brush is so i'm going to go into my artisan gel paint i'm going to fully load up the brush so you can see that's fully loaded no inconsistencies and i'm just going to draw a line just to show you how fine this brush is so you can see how fine that line is now because the brush is so fine it doesn't hold a lot of product so you do find that you have to keep going back into your product to reload your brush because it is such a fine brush we're looking at two or three hairs there okay so you can do lines you can do swells you can taper that out so pop your product on and use that and do a swell you can do ultra fine dots you see how tiny that dot is it's great for flowers or leaves so you can do a petal shape and then go in and it's fine enough to be able to use the existing product on there to do the veins of the leaf. It's great if you're character painting and you are doing eyes. So you can see how fine that is. And then you can pop eyelashes because it's so fine. You can taper out that line and do your eyelashes. You can do your pupil. Okay, so you can see how fine that brush is. This brush, like I've said, if you're doing character painting, is going to be the one that you are going to use 90% of the time. Now, this is the ultra fine. It's obviously quite short okay in length you could use the ultra fine striping brush but you don't have as much control and it does take 
quite a bit of experience to be able to learn how to use this brush to be able to create the lines okay or swells or whatever it is that you're creating whereas this one because it's got a shorter length on it you can have that little bit more control holding it like a pen especially when it comes to your swells and your wiggly lines okay so i'm just also going to show you on here swirling so when we come to do a swirl you need to draw it in your mind's eye because we have a center and we have an end okay so in my mind's eye i've already drawn that swell so what i do is i start i mean everyone will find it different doing your own way but this is how i do it so my highest point of my swell is going to be here so i would go down to that lowest point okay so because i started there i've got a build up of product here which i can now carry round into my swell so because we're working on a tip i can turn it but obviously if it was with a client you would have to go round this way or ask a client to move their hands so that their fingers at this angle okay so i'm just going to show you here you would go round and round again so don't try and do it if i try to do this in one go let me just complete this and then i'll show you the difference and then i've got the end of my or the center of my swell if you like because this is the end the center of my swell just there okay and then you can taper that out if you wanted it a point not adding any more product just tapering out the product that's on there now if i was to do that in one go naturally you would probably want to start in the center so this bit's fine but this is this is real messy okay which is what we don't want so you can then also do your ultra fine swells like that again i'll just show you that again so you have your most of your product and then go round and then you can taper that round and then if you were doing like a I don't know a vine you could put leaves on there okay so that's how to do swells don't try and do a swell in one go another which you may consider as a swell when I fully load up this brush I want a bobble on the end for this okay and what I'm doing I'm placing my product down because I want it to be like a teardrop place your product down and then lift okay so that is a really quick so if i pop the center here if you this is just using pressure of your brush i'm not actually moving my brush so where you want the petal you press down and lift and you can go around again press down and lift and if you did that all the way so i want a bubble on the end now can you see i've got a bubble on the end press down and lift taper that out slightly you could do this in any color i'm obviously just showing you in black because it shows up really well for you guys to be able to see I just need to complete this flower so I'm not actually moving my brush I'm just applying pressure and then you can pop center in there okay and then you can add a leaf 
in the same way. So I'm not, I'm just putting my brush down, lifting it off. Putting my brush down, lifting it off. So pressure is really important when you're doing things like swirls. So I'm just going to come around from this one. You're hard, you're almost just floating it over the nail. Whereas you can use different pressures. So I'll show you on this one. You can use different amounts of product on your brush. So this is full pressure. This is lifting off. And this is with a bobble on the end, hardly any pressure, but just at the angle that you're lifting that off with. Okay. Don't feel guilty as a nail tech to sit and do this. You will find your own way, especially with swells and designs like this. You will find your own way of doing the design and for example creating your swell because I always start the same and I always finish the same you might find that it's easier for you to start in the center and come around and finish that way but that isn't the way I do it that isn't how I find it easier. Obviously, if you're left-handed or right-handed, you do uh, naturally. I would do a swell that way, but you do sometimes, obviously, have to go the other way as well. So you need to learn how to do your swells going both ways. Okay, but whether you're right-handed or left-handed, personally, I'm right-handed. But if you're left-handed, I know that you will find it easier to do a swell uh, going this way rather than this way okay so sit and have a little practice learn your pressure and learn how to use your brush to create all of these different effects okay so we've got shapes and lines on that one we've got a little eye as well and a leaf and then we've got our swells and our pressure practice. Okay. So that is the fine lining brush techniques. So welcome to the dotting tool section of the brush techniques. So I know dotting tools aren't really brushes, but they are something that we use um, and are probably used for quite a while within the nail arts spectrum so nine times out of ten dotting tools are double-ended mine are I've got different sizes I've also got a pointy tool on this one okay now each end of the dotting tool is a different size so as you can see this one's really quite small and then this one's a lot larger all right now what I see a lot of the time is people using their dotting tools incorrectly and they are amazing little tools to create lots of different effects so you can do marbling you can obviously do dots uh, you can create vintage roses you can do lots of different things with your dotting tool so i'm just going to show you i've got my five tips again just two coats of gel polish okay no uh, top coat or anything like that so i've wiped off the inhibition layer and i'm just going to show you the difference with dotting tools now personally i find using a gel polish with the dotting tool easier than a um artisan gel paint and i'm just going to show you the difference and why so i've just got this top black is an artisan gel paint and this is a gel polish <coughs> so I've got my nail here and I'm going to use my largest dotting tool so you can see 
okay and I'm going to pop it into my artisan gel paint so you can see the thickness of that artisan gel paint okay if I pull it that way you'll be able to see you see how thick that is so if you're doing dotting with an artisan gel paint what I recommend to do is do a few taps on your palette to get rid of any excess so you can now see my dotting tool is fully loaded okay and I'm just going to go in on the nail so I'm going to start on this side so you can see so the, with an artisan gel paint what you have to do is push lift and give it a little swell in the mid air because otherwise you get a string and sometimes what can happen so I'll just show you that again so I'm going to do it without doing the swell so I'm just going to do a dot and pull it off can you see there the string has come out of the dot and created a little line so what you need to do I'll show you again is pop your dotting tool on give it a little mid air twirl and then you don't get that string coming out of your dot and I'll just show you with a smaller dotting tool as well. So I'm going to pop that into my product so it's fully loaded. Dab off any excess. There we go. And then you've got a smaller dot on there. Okay, can you see? So nice and consistent and they're rounded. What a lot of people I've seen doing, I'm just going to put a bit more product is this so they have a smaller dotting tool okay it's not my large one it's a smaller one but they want to create a dot that's this size now that's not going to happen because the circumference of the ball on the end of this dotting tool is different to the circumference i'm just going to move that so that we can stay in focus is different to the circumference of this circle and difference is not going to create size dot you want so what people do is they get a smaller dotting tool and they do this now you may have created a the size that you want so you've created this size but there's inconsistencies in that circle it's not a circle anymore okay you have created some weird egg shape thing which we don't want. We want a circle. We don't want a weird egg shape thing. So I'm just going to do that again. People do this. And it's not right. Can you see that's not a perfect circle? Whereas if you use the correct size dotting tool for the correct size dot that you want to create, give a little wiggle, it will be a perfect circle. Okay. So that is, they are all done using an artisan gel paint. Now I'm just going to show you a gel polish, okay? So I'm going to go in with my larger dotting tool. I'm going to go in with my gel polish. I'm going to fully load up, show you on here. I'm going to fully load up my dotting tool, okay? And can you see there's no string there? I mean, it lifts off slightly, but there's certainly no string. I'm going to remove any excess and I'm going to pop my dot on the nail so you don't have to with that do your little wiggle in midair now that is a perfect dot and what I love about using a gel polish rather than an artisan gel uh, gel with the dotting tool is that it starts to disperse and it sits back in on itself okay so it softens that dot and they're not so um if i turn that you can see that these sit higher whereas the gel polish is flatter you see the difference there now i know that's only ever so slight but when it's on someone's nail and you've done a lot of dot work they're going to feel it and if you've got a client that doesn't like to feel any lumps or bumps 
then it's best to use a gel polish with a dotting tool. OK, so obviously you would have to cure that, especially if you're going in, because what you don't want to happen, for example, if you're doing smaller dots around this, you don't want this to start to disperse and bleed into one another. So you can do a really, you can see that's happening now. OK, so they're starting to bleed into one another. You don't want that to happen. So what you would do, for example, if you were doing a flower, you would pop your sensor in, flash cure that for 10 seconds. And then that's set, it's done. And it also allows you, once that's cured, to be able to go around the edge. And for example, if you misalign something, you'd be able to wipe that off and you'd still have your center. So if you weren't happy with it, you'd be able to do that. So always make sure you flash cure your dot work. Okay, now... I've already explained it's so important to use the different size dotting tools for the different size dots. I know it sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. But there is one exception. So I've got my large size dotting tool here and I want to create a gradient in the size of dots that I'm creating. So, for example, if you were going down the nail and you wanted the dots to get smaller as you went down, I would fully load up my dotting tool because I don't want to run out of polish, okay? And I would start with a large dot and then using the same dotting tool and not putting any extra product on, you can see that they've gone down in size. Can you see that? So I'm just gonna do that again. So I've loaded up my dotting tool. I'll start this way. And then I've got a large dot, which is the size of the dot for the dotting tool. So that's what I want. And then I'm going to come down and create smaller dots all the way down. And then you would flash cure that. OK, so they don't run into themselves. So you can see and you can also see where the light's hitting that, how the artisan gel paint has got divots in it, whereas the gel polish is completely smooth so that's why I prefer to use a dotting tool with gel polish rather than an artisan gel paint okay so that's simple dotting tool techniques now I know this is really simple and we probably had dotting tools given to us in our college kits or one of the first thing that we bought um, to create different designs but a lot of people discredit them and dotting, I think, is going to be coming back in a big way. There's a lot of dotting around at the moment. So if you can nail this technique and be confident with using your dotting tools, then I think we are going to be on trend this summer with dotting. So also you can use your smaller dotting tool to go in and create that gradient like this, so I'll just show you that. So you can go in and create swirls. Just go in and show you that again. So I'm using the same dotting tool, I'm not reloading it, but you get a gradient in sizing. The reason that happens is because you're running out of polish on your dotting tool. So that's why you create a smaller dot as you get towards the end. OK. So that is how to use your dotting tool effectively. And once you become confident with it, you can go in and you can create all different lines. And patterns and really pretty art just by using a dotting tool. But please don't try and create a larger dot with a smaller dotting tool. Use the right size. And then obviously you would cure that and then you would pop your top coat on top of that if you've got a particularly uh, thick top coat then that's great because it helps to 
flatten out the surface because even though the gel polish is quite thin on there your client will be able to feel the dots so if they are particularly fussy um, and don't like having ridges or being able to feel anything on their nail then a nice thick top coat on there will seal that in great if you haven't got a thick top coat then you can base coat on top of it and then do your top coat so there's a little video on how and how not to use your dotting tools hi everyone so in this workshop i'm going to show you the technique that i've called floating so with this technique i have drawn on to my nails different shapes so on here we've got diamonds we've got an eye shape and a circle and hearts as well and then i'm going to show you on the other two how not to do painting so first of all i'm going to show you the mistakes people make when they paint nails now this workshop is crucial if you're going to be doing further character workshops because this is a technique i use a lot so i'm going to use my uh, number two brush so this brush is pointed but it has got quite a big belly on it so the reason I use this brush for floating is because it can hold quite a lot of product to be able to achieve the effect that we're going to do so first thing I'm going to show you is how not to paint nails so I'm going to go into my gel polish okay I'm going to fully load up my brush and then what people do is they have an area that they need to paint and they go in and they start painting. Okay, now that's fine, but you can see there that we haven't got a consistent coverage. We've got lighter parts, we've got darker parts and then they try and even that out and they're using their brush like you would if you were painting a wall. And it's just not a consistent coverage of colour. Can you see that on there? So I'm just going to show you that again. They fully load up their brush. They paint the nail. They try and get it nice and even. And no matter how many times you go over this, you are not going to get an even, consistent. Can you see it's lighter here, darker here? darker here on this edge you're not going to get a consistent coverage of product so then what they do is they cure that and then they go in with more product because they need to even up that consistency now what that has done is it's evened up the consistency but it's really thick on the nail you can see there how thick it is okay and it also adds another step into the process so they do the first coat they cure it they then have to take it out they then have to do a second coat and then they have to cure that and then they might be doing some detailing on top of that and it just prolongs the process of painting which obviously if we're doing this on a client you don't want to have to do so that's how not to paint a particular shape or area so I'm just going to pop that to one side. So the floating technique, I'm going to show you on here first. So this is a diamond shape. It's just a quick shape that I've sketched onto the nail. Now, when you do floating, what you want to do is fully load your brush. OK, so it's fully loaded. Right. And what I'm going to do. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see. What you're going to do is butt the polish up to the edge of the shape. So I'm hardly touching the nail. I'm just working within the polish, really. I'm not painting like you would here. Can you see my brush is moving? I'm putting too much pressure on that brush and it creates the inconsistencies. I'm hardly touching the nail and I'm butting that colour up to the line of where I want it to go okay and I'm pulling it into the corners butting it up you can see my brush pressure is hardly anything at all 
and I'm pulling that product down to where I want it. So what you need to do is your outlines first. By doing that, we create a nice crisp line on the outline of the shape. Then we've got this space here. So we've got excess product within our outline. So then what we do is we float that product out. So you can see I'm, hard, I'm not even really touching the nail at all. I'm working within the polish. You float that product out, make it nice and even, and fill in that negative space. That is floating. So we've got colour consistency throughout the entirety of the shape. And we have also got a nice crisp line along our edges. And we've been able to butt up into the corners. So I'm going to do exactly the same technique, but on a smaller diamond. So again, I fully loaded up the tip of my brush. I'm butting that colour into the corners, up to the line, and then floating the product out. Okay, so I'm also going to show you how to do an eye shape. So, or a pointed oval. So I'm going to butt that up into the corner take the product up round reload my brush butt it down into that corner reload my brush take that out into the outline and then float out into my negative space now i have done the video on dotting tools um, but obviously there's going to be some circles that are going to be too big to use a dotting tool. So that's why I've done this circle. So what I've got is my dotting tool here, which is the largest dotting tool that I've got. I'm fully loading up my dotting tool with my gel polish and I'm going to pop it into the middle. OK, so I've got a nice distribution of products there and I'm going to load up my brush and I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm just dispersing in a circular motion that product. So again, I'm working within my product, not onto the nail. So I don't get those brush strokes and dispersing that product evenly to make a larger circle. Okay. The same technique can be used to do hearts. So I'm going to get my dotting tool, fully load it with polish, and I'm going to do the um, top of the hearts. So I get that perfect crisp dot and line on there. And I'm just going to do that as well with my smaller heart which is just there so i've got a nice distribution of product i've got excess product on there and what i'm going to do i've got product on my brush because i don't want the product that's on my nail to be sapped up into my brush okay so i'm just going to pull that down out of that circle and create a nice straight line i'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and the same in the middle and then float it out into the negative space and you've got a heart. I'm going to do exactly the same with the smaller heart, pull it down so you've got a nice straight line coming out from that circle, down into your point of the heart and float out the product. All right, so that is how to float product out into different shapes and sizes using your number two brush to create the depth of colour that's needed, the consistency of the gel polish all in one coat. This is a perfect technique if you're going to be going on to doing character painting. So please make sure you practice that technique before you go on to doing the character painting workshops. Thank you all so much and I'll see you soon. 
So that completes my techniques with different brushes and gel painting. These are the absolute basics you need to learn to be able to complete any of the nail art workshops within the group. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, then please PM me or comment on the link on this video and I will get back to you. It's not a problem at all. Um, on my YouTube channel, if you like, subscribe and click the notification bell, you will get all the notifications of all the free workshops within this group. And if you'd like to subscribe or pay per workshop, then just PM me, it's not a problem. I hope you've all had fun. Like I say, I hope you've all learned the techniques and I can't wait to see what we create. See you soon, guys. Bye.